Hello everybody, Brother Neuro here. Shall we listen to some LBC callers? Yeah. Okay, the subject of this call is what will happen, you know, when a no-deal Brexit happens. It's from Coventry. Hi, David. David, Hello. David from Coventry. Will it happen? Could it happen? Well, I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. That's, that's not an answer, David, but good start. Uh, assume that we leave on the 31st of October. Yeah. What will happen on the first... No, 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 we, 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 we'll be leaving on midnight, no, the first, forget it. To November. Was it now? What will happen? Rhetorical question, but I, let me answer it. <laughs> okay. Okay, a rhetorical question, let me answer it. I don't think you know the definition of a rhetorical question. No. Wait, rhetorical questions don't require answers. Absolutely nothing. We a will carry on, and I've looked at this from the point of view of... Com absolutely nothing. We will carry on, and I've looked at this from the point of view of common sense and logic. Oh, fantastic. Oh, thank God for that, mate, because I've been sat here using nothing but... I've been living off hysterical instinct and blind prejudice the whole time. Why would Angela Merkel say to her motor manufacturers who sell 20% of their luxury cars here in Great Britain, oh, you can't sell cars to Britain anymore because we don't like them anymore? That, that's literally not what would happen. She's not going to say it's not. Do you, what? What? How old are you? This. It's not a case of like, oh, we don't like them anymore. It's a case of, you know, it's a little thing we're having like a trade agreement, mate. That you know, that's what it's all sort of based on. Spanish government say to their tomato growers, apparently we get about eighty percent of our tomatoes. Fucking tomatoes again. Um, oh, you can't sell your tomatoes to Great Britain anymore. So what? Um, you'll have so, to buy so them what, your, so so what? What? It's not because you don't like them, it's because you don't have a trade agreement with them. Unless you want to think what happen? We'll still have all of that trade, we'll just have it on different terms. Is that what you're I saying? Think we, I, I think until we get sorted out and the dust settles, we will carry on as we are. I am Until we get sorted out and the dust settled, we'll carry on as we are. What, what happened? What do you mean the dust? So you, when people say we'll get sorted out and the dust settles, that suggests that until then, there'll be a time of chaos. Things will be up in the air, but you're saying they'll carry on as they are. And I don't know about you, but that's not good enough for me. Right, the, you know, when, you know, the, the fact that the argument is, oh, nothing will change, it'll all be the same. That's not enough. You can't suggest, if you're going to argue in favour of a t a, s some political, you know, massive political upheaval, it has to be objectively, provably, it has to be fucking objectively, provably, fucking better. It has to be significantly better. So even though, even though the European Union has said countless times there is no transition period without a withdrawal agreement... They're bluffing, Sheila. You say that's... That's but they're, 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 they're bluffing, Sheila. They're, they've got a pair. They've got they've got a pair. They've got a pair of twos, and they want us to think they got four aces. Found in fury. I, it, it, it defies logic. It, defi it defies. Oh, it defi It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense to me. It defi It defies. Yeah, you're right, Dave. It does defy this. This whole scenario defies logic. On that, we can agree. It's common sense, and. Uh, politicians, there's loads of bluff and bluster and rhetoric and so on and so forth. But, bottom... but why would they argue, why would they tell you that there's going to be bad, why would they fucking you know, say that they're going to do this thing and then tell you that it's going to be bad on on this level? They would lie, wouldn't they, and say it's all going to be good. Like, I don't know, Boris Johnson has, waving his fucking kipper in the air. The is, um, they're not going to deliberately harm their own people. I, I, I know. It's a, listen, I love. I, listen, I, Dave. In a, in a way, I love Dave's naivety here. That he thinks that the, the government would never do anything that would harm its own people. And by uh, we are trying to hurt. Well, no, we're not. Well, well, like, and, well, well like, yeah, hang on, hang on. What? Because on, you believe? On, yeah, Jeremy, no, Jeremy Hunt has said he would. No, but but that's a matter of opinion. Yeah, he said he would. He said he was. He so was, Jeremy Hunt is of the uh, Jeremy Hunt, who wants to be leader of the Tories, is of the opinion that, that there will be bad th that people will lose their jobs, which he said, and he said he's willing to do that. And you think that's his opinion? Why would he express that opinion if he wants to be leader of the Tories? It's not a matter of opinion. He has said, 
I will look the owners of family businesses in the eye and say they should be prepared to see their companies go bust to make sure that the political act of a no deal Brexit happens. Yeah, but he wouldn't do that, would he? Let's be honest. He wouldn't do that. He won't look anyone in the fucking eye. That is essentially what Jeremy Hunt said yes to when he was asked that question on, on Andrew Marr's programme. That, right. that, is, that is a politician saying, I am prepared to say to people, I'm, I am making, I'm not just here when things harm you, I'm prepared to make decisions that will harm you. That is a really astounding thing for a politician to say. But he has expressed an opinion that harm would occur, and that is only an opinion. We don't know until we get there. It is, it's, again, we don't know. This whole thing of we don't know. Why would you vote for something this fucking, this, 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 this was never the case. This was, before the election, it wasn't a case of we don't know, was it? It, it was, it was Project Fear versus things will be better. Now it's we don't know. You don't vote for something like this. You don't vote on the basis of, you voted for this on basis of we don't know. I'm, I'm not putting numbers on it. I'm asking you whether you think a free trade agreement such as the one we have now, with all of the certainties and the flow of trade that, that, that exists, whether that is more advantageous than, not a withdrawal agreement, we'll leave that to one side, but, but a lack of an agreement, a lack of a deal. And even if we have 35, 40, 50, 100 mini deals, again, the EU says this will not happen. Even if we did have that, you would accept that for a chunk of time, economically, that would be disadvantageous to many small businesses in this country. Would you accept that? I run a small business. I don't believe it'll be a problem. I, I doesn't believe it. He doesn't. Be I don't believe it. I don't believe. And what you be I wipe a monkey's ass with what you believe, Mike, Dave. What you believe is is irrelevant, you know, because you've never been in this position. No one has. You can't just say you believe, you don't believe. I can't see it happening. Because? I really don't believe it'll be a problem, because I think we will carry on pretty much as we are. And what do you do? Until we, uh, <clears throat> I work in the building trade. And what do you do? I have great sympathy with people that are concerned about medicines. Um, you have great sympathy with them. Well, their sympathy will fucking, you know, your sympathy will do them so much good, you know, when they can't get their medication and people die. You know, we will, I will t take such great, you know, I will take great pleasure knowing that, you, you know, the medication people can't get that is killing them will fucking, is there. Absolutely. Only a, only a very hard person couldn't be concerned about their worries and concerns. But think about it logically. Yeah, yeah think about it logically. You know, just, just you know, forget about your medicine and, and the fact that you're ill and you can't get the medication that makes you feel better. Right. Just use logic for a second. You know, if we run out of paracetamol, we will contact a country somewhere in the world that has a surplus of paracetamol, buy it and fly it in. Paracetamol? Who the fuck? Who who's, who needs paracetamol? That that paracetamol is when you got as, as if there's a country sat around going going. Oh, we've got too much fucking paracetamol. What's all this? What are we supposed to do with all this fucking paracetamol? It's just laying around. I'm fucking used. I'm going down the park feeding it to swans. It's just fucking paracetamol is everywhere. Who needs paracetamol to live? Fucking paracet paracetamol is when you got like I've got a fucking headache. Quick. Get on the blower to fucking quick, you know. Get on the blower to fucking, you know, uh, to someone, some country that's got a surplus of paracetamol. So I've got fucking hell. It's not. It's not as if all supplies of desperately important and vital medicines will suddenly drop. Not all of them. Just s some of them. You, you don't know. Again, no facts. Just it's not as if this will happen. I am. Even, even, the, the even though we have important agreements and checks and balances within our EU exchanges of, of medicines to make sure they're safe. So we get them from where? Yeah, but safe medicine. I mean, who wants to go and live on the edge? Just believe. Uh, and, 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 what about, and, and what about the standards in those countries? That, that kind of thing. It's an important practicality, isn't it, David? Of course it is, but you have countries like Australia, New Zealand, Australia United States, and, Canada. Australia and New Zealand. So if I've got a headache and I need paracetamol, but there isn't any, I've got to wait until it arrives from fucking Australia, by which time I'm sure my fucking headache will have cleared up. 
We're just gonna we, we're gonna end up with geezers on the street corner saying, "Yo, mate, do you want some ibuprofen? Do you want some ibuprofen? Do you want some Nurofen, bruv? Do you want some Nurofen? Do you want some night nurse?" There's goodwill on all sides. No, I don't accept it. You don't accept it. There's goodwill on all sides. I'll fuck off with your all sides bollocks. No, I don't accept it because I don't see why people would deliberately be nasty and hurt one another. Right, well, you live in a fucking fantasy world, bruv. You live in this fucking land of marshmallows and rivers of chocolate. Hey, I was in the fire service for 33 years. <laughs> I've met some really, really nasty people. Oh, but those people don't exist, David. But you, those, you've met nasty people, but they don't exist, surely. Oh. Over the years. So, um, yes, I have met. I, I, I'm a very much a realist. I've met people that have set lights to their own houses and killed their own families. Well, I... right, you've met people who have set lights into their houses and killed their own families. But I've fucking... No... Just piss off. This next guy is talking about Kim Darroch, who is a guy who uh, was the British ambassador to uh, America, to, to America, who uh, had some uh, private, you know, secret, private messages uh, leaked in which he described the Trump administration as inept and I think it was utterly dysfunctional. And uh, and he's now resigned. Nick has called from Croydon. Nick from Croydon. This... Nick from Croydon is going to sort this out. Question of trust in Boris Johnson. Nick, hello. Uh, hello, Phil. Good afternoon. Good to you. The only person responsible for, for Sir Kim Darroch resigning is Sir Kim Darroch. His message back about uh, President Trump just shows he is incapable of fulfilling his function. Be, be frank by all means, but at the use of language in an, in an official document like... The, the, the use of language. These are the facts over feelings, people. These are the fuck your feelings and free speech and facts don't care about your feelings of the use of language. First of all, this wasn't a public document, right? This wasn't public. This wasn't a public fucking exchange, you know. And it's not like he's sitting there and goes, these people are fucking idiots, are they? He, he didn't say that. Oh, he hurt Trump's fifis. Now he's got a fucking... Or mendacious or inept or stupid. Mendacious. As if Trump knows what that word fucking means. That's not the language we need from a, a uh, different, different... Yeah, yeah, because you people, people who support Trump are, are the people who, who need to start lecturing us on fucking using correct, using appropriate language or using language that is befitting of a fucking, of, of a high position, of a high office of government. You're the ones who should lecture every, anyone. You're defending what happened on the basis that it's not diplomatic language. In this day and age. Yeah, it's Kim Darroch using the word, how dare he use the word inept. What an absolute, what a fucking vibe. Basically, it's like, you know, he's basically Hitler. No, it's not. Any official document isn't private. By, well, these by, are because they're deleted by, after three months. These are, these are private. They're automatically by, deleted by, uh, after... Yeah. By by uh, definition, if you put something on on a official public document, it's not. It's a not an matter. official you public know what document. I mean, Nick. You know what no, I mean. I don't. You, no, do, I don't. you do. No, no, no he doesn't. I mean. No, he doesn't know what you mean, Sheila. Stop assuming. Stop giving this man any credit. He doesn't know what you mean. It's not, you don't routine. It's when he's when he's writing it. He's not writing it to you and me. He's writing it to a limited number of people in government who need to see it. And then, like I've said to you three Sorry, times, no, you are entirely. And like right. I said to you three times, you are entirely. He's, right. he's, she's not. How many diplomatic fucking messages have you seen before today? How many have you looked up? Diplomatic in, um, uh, telegrams are deleted after three months. So whoever kept hold of it kept hold of it for a reason. Um, no, you are entirely Lee wrong. Anything entirely Lee 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 wrong is on an official uh, headed paper. Is a public. It's on official headed paper, Sheila. It's on a. It's on headed paper for fuck's sake. I mean, doc 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 doc. Document. writing personally to Sheila from L LBC is an entirely different matter. Yes, I mean, come on, it's not like he's writing an email to a radio presenter, Sheila. It's not. It's not something serious like that. Well, I, I'll tell you why I see it because I know it to be true that there are <laughs> knowing stuff. Please, Sheila. Matters in government which are conducted 
in private, sometimes even in, in total, sometimes even in total secret for reasons Quite of security. So. That's what I'm saying Quite to you, so. and you know Quite that so. to be well, true. Well, well, in that case, well, 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 well now, you, what do you mean, well, in that case? No, you, you, you disagreeing with her? Remember, you can't say well in that case. Phrase it in more diplomatic language. The language, sir, 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 Kim used was childish insulting us straight out of oh poor fucking didums inept is the word inept is childish apparently the playground there's there is oh yeah the playground when i was a kid at school and you, you get picked on by bullies they just begin punching you in and going yeah mate you're well fucking inept yeah oh look at the ineptitude of this fucking look at you you're such an inept piece of shit thank you ways so 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 kim could have said for example that uh, that the uh, the administration is I, I bet he wished he'd said he's a fucking apric mangled apricot hell beast and a stupid fat cunt at this fucking stage say inept and it's a ridiculous thing to say it's a gratuitous what planet do you live on where you think the word inept is gratuitous when challenging isn't the same as inept is it um sir kim isn't able to 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 state whether president trump's inept or not so kim's never been president of of the united states he's no judge of what's uh capable and what's inept all right so you're not allowed to have an opinion because you've never been president have you ever been an ambassador mate have you ever been a, a member of her majesty's ambassadors to from for, you know to to the fucking british government from anywhere have you been an ambassador no well then you can't have a fucking opinion on anything Right. Have you ever voted in an election? Did you vote in the referendum? I bet you did, didn't you? Do you know what I mean? I bet you had an opinion, didn't you? Right. And you're quite right you're entitled to that opinion. But unless you've been a politician, how dare you sit there and have an opinion on something you can't... What, what kind of fucking argument's that? Yeah? It reminds me, it's like, when you, it's like when you get these people who sit there, you know, they sit there and just... Like, they'll post comments going, you know... Oh, you know, they'll talk about how many subscribers you've got compared to people you're responding to. And then you look at their channel and they've got two, right? One of them is themselves. Or when people call you irrelevant, when people like to call you irrelevant, you're like, and you look at, who the fuck are you? Nobody, right? You can't sit there and make an argument that immediately disqualifies your own opinion. Now, recently in America, there was a weird story where uh, some CNN reporter wanted to uh, talk to, the, you know, wanted to, uh, you know, have an interview with uh, these uh, three uh, members of the GOP. And one guy in particular, I think his name was Robert Foster, said that he would only be interviewed uh, by this um, this um, CNN journalist. Her name's Larison Campbell, if she was accompanied by a male chaperone because otherwise it could you know it could be used against him like he was like saying he didn't want to be alone with a woman it could be used to suggest he was having some extramarital affair or he did something you know i don't know why bringing a man along with her would make a difference he could have said he was having a, he was having a twos up with her i don't know but you know so this next call is is regarding that Michael's call from Worthing already. You're Michael. furious with me, Michael. Why? Oh, Sheila, please. Oh, please. Sheila. What do you want? Oh, Sheila, darling. What do men to do? What, what do you want men to do, darling? Hey, what is it? Hey, you don't like it when we sexually assault you. You don't like it when we don't want to be alone in a room with you. Come, make your fucking minds up, girl. Make your, what do you want? God. Uh, what, in, in what context, what, what do I want yeah, you to he do? Said to the, he said to the reporter, I want you to bring somebody to chaperone you, so make sure that everything's above board. He said it at the last right. minute, having agreed to, to it, it earlier on. It doesn't matter, I am freely fed up. Oh, so, so it doesn't matter, you know, it, like, what, what's wrong? He, he, he said, would you bring her back around? Because, you know, why? Because he just doesn't trust women. He doesn't want to be alone in a room with a woman, you know, because he doesn't trust her. He, the Me Too argument. Do you know what? You, I... The Me Too argument. There is no Me Too argument, mate. It's not an argument. I will not be in a room with a woman by myself now because of that movement. What do you think the Me Too... You will not be in a room alone with a woman because of that... Because of that movement. Okay, that says more about you, mate, than it does about women. The fact that you've just admitted... And you've just admitted that. That says more about you and your fucking mindset and your mentality and the way you fucking behave than it does about anyone else. Two argument is. Well, it's just like, keep your hands off me. Well, it's just like, keep your hands off me. What, and you're, you've got a problem with that? 
Okay, first of all, that's not a Me Too. That, like I said, it's not an argument. But, but like, it, it's not. Let's say it was. Let's say that it was an argument. And let's say that the argument was keep your hands off me. Let's say it's that. You've got a prop. You're sick of that? You're sick of the keep your hands off me argument? And you won't be alone in a room with a woman? Because of it? And it's not that I would ever touch a woman because, you know, I'm a gay man anyway. But yeah, I'm a gay man anyway. What, you, do, do, does every person, does every, do you, when you walk into a room, do you announce, go, hello, by the way, everyone, I'm, hello, I'm gay, just so you know. Do, do, does everyone know that? Do, 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 you know, and, but, you know, you don't seem to be too sharp on the fucking uptake here. Does that mean, does that not mean that, you know, you may not know the way to conduct yourself? You know, maybe there's, maybe there's certain men that have got issues with, you know, the way you've, you know, acted with them, interacted with them. I don't know. Do you not like being in a single, in, in a room with a single woman? I don't, I'm not sure. That it, I, I, I'm, I, it's not my place to talk, speak on behalf of women, but I'm pretty sure most women listening to this would be like, good. Just because of the Me Too uh, organisation. If it's not an organisation. What do you think is, what do you think the danger is to you? Well, she could, she could be, you know, psychotic or she could be... She could be psychotic. Bipolar. Or bipolar. Because that's, you know, because the idea, because you know, that's the thing that's going to be the psychotic or bipolar. That's the, that's the argument, not just women in general, you know, you're just scared that she might be psychotic or bipolar. And the fact that you're a gay man just seems to make this whole sort of, you know, the fact that you're, when you hit you're a gay man, or someone who should understand about, you know, the sort of, you know, generally, you do realise that, you know, that you, you know, as a gay man, you know, do you realise that fucking, you know, people like you have been blamed for, you know, do you realise that, you know, that people wouldn't leave their kids alone? There are people in this world, there are men who don't want to be left alone in a room with you because you, they think you might sexually assault them. Do you realize there are people who wouldn't leave their kids alone with you because of the demonization that's been done by you, that's been done by people? And, and you, do you realize that in the Catholic Church blames AIDS for pe on people like you? Do you realize they blame, like, you know, when pedophile priests are not, are not pedophile priests, they're gay priests. That's the fucking language they use, right? And you don't get that, but you'll make this fucking... You don't understand that, do you? I have no idea, Sheila. But I still feel uncomfortable going into a room. You have no idea, so that's it. So just because something could... You know, you do realise this argument that you could be accused of, you know, of doing something. You do realise that that argument could be made with any crime. Like, you could be accused, you know, of, you know, of, you know, of committing any crime by anybody. Right? There's no statistical evidence that men getting accused, you know, men being falsely accused of whatever is, is, it happens at a higher rate than any other crime. Even if it's a case that this guy would do nothing or never has done anything, your slight discomfort is a price that I think has to be paid. Do you mean, okay, let's, let's talk about life before Me Too. What kind, of, what kind of settings would you find yourself in a room alone with a woman at, at work, maybe? Something like that. Uh, well, I don't work, but let's say a doctor's surgery. But... I, I don't work. Doctor. A doctor's surgery. You think a female doctor. You wouldn't go, so you would not have a female doctor if there was some, because you think she might just accuse you. How many fucking patients do you think, a do, do you think a doctor's not got enough fucking shit on? You wouldn't be alone with a female doctor because of the meat. A doctor, right. And, and, and you always felt comfortable before then? Before that, yeah. But now I will always take somebody with me to make sure that, you know, everything. You'll take a chaperone with you. In case the doctor's psychotic. No, you never know Sheila these days, really. You never know. That's the thing these days. Anyway, God, you never know. In the old days, like, before Me Too, a long, long ago, 18 months ago, you know, I didn't think, you know, now I'm just assuming that most women, you know, are psychotic. And, and that's really the cause of most of the accusations, is that they're bipolar or psychotic. Fuck really? me. The mental health issue is enormous in this country. The mental health issue has got nothing to do with Me Too, mate. Right? There is no correlation. You are the first person I've ever heard to make any correlation between Me Too and, you know, and people being, and psychosis. 
So you never know who you're standing next to. Uh, and, and if you went to see a male doctor, who of course is as prone to mental illness as any other human being... Well, I wouldn't want would, him to think that I was going to touch him up. Let's put it that way. Would you take it? Yes, but do you know what? They they used to. That used to be the case with gay men, didn't it? Gay men used to be fucking... That, that's an assumption that a lot of... Like, that used to be the joke, wouldn't it? All oh, bombs against the walls, lads. You don't see the irony there? Upper and into it with a male doctor. I will do, yeah. Oh, you will? Yeah, of so course will. Oh, so this isn't about Me Too or gender or the fear of being assaulted? Oh, no, 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 no. That, that Me Too thing covers all bases. Me Too covers all bases? No, it doesn't. All sexual it doesn't. It, well, no, it but, no, no, hang on. It, it, it covers, it covers uh, women being protected from harassment is, is its central message. Oh, so, so you're now sexualising Oh, it. I see, Sheila. That's your game, is it? Turn Me Too into about women, right? God, we can't have it. You sexist bitch. Did this guy not start the entire conversation by talking solely about women? It wasn't until Sheila asked him about men that he suddenly went, oh, no, no, I'll take a, I'll take, I'll, I'll take a chaperone in. Why do you assume that you're a chaperone? You do realise that most people who are victims of, of some form of sexual abuse or assault are, you know, are attacked by people or abused by people who they know who are in their family or their friends. You know that, right? To like, like it's like seventy percent of it. So your chaperone is more likely to fucking attack you than the complete stranger. Did you ever consider that? I bet your chaperone's always going to be a man, isn't it? Would you take a female chaperone with you? No, it just is. It was. It's a no, campaign no, no. about. You are now saying it's it, all, all well, no, women. No, I'm not. I'm telling you. It's that's all why, about women. Why... It's all about women now, isn't it? Yeah. Yes, it is actually. The first question to you was, what do you think the central message of Me Too is? It's clearly a, a campaign against male harassment no, no, of women. No, 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 no. I'll tell you. Yes, no, yes, yes, yes. yes. And, and, and you did start the conversation by talking about women, mate. You started it. You didn't say, I won't be alone in a room with men or women. You didn't say, I won't be alone in a room with anyone. You started by talking about women. Then you started talking about women being psychotic. It, 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 no, no, it's, it's a cover for women to hide under if they need to. Oh, it's a cover for women to hide. Oh, so now you're sexual. Now you're making it about. Not only are you sexualizing it now, not only are you giving it some court that are saying it's about one gender. Not only you're now saying that it's it's now an it's now a cover for women, right? So now not only are you making it about one gender, you're making it. You're saying you're now creating a conspiracy around it. It's about c c a cover. And, and you've only thought this think, since me too. Do you really you, think that every man wants didn't... to touch a woman but when they're by them when they're by the Not at all. No, they don't. Of course they don't. Not at all. No, but all I'm, I'm frequently on my own with men in professional settings. It's No, oh, you're now Sheila. Uh -huh. Perfectly fine. Yeah but, yeah, but Sheila, come on, look. You can go into a room. If a man walks in by himself, what is your reaction? Am I Hello? Safe? No, it's not. It's... No, no, it's not. It is. Your first thing is, am I safe in this room with this man? Well, not, not at work, it isn't. Well, it Unless it's Nigel Farage. Depends on... Well, on, I know people. Yeah, well, why, 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 no, I'm not talking about work, but if you're in a room and what? you're doing something, whatever, I don't a library, and you're in a quiet... A oh, library? Oh, you're more likely to get raped in a library than you are at work, is that... A... ...and a bloke walks in, what do you do? You go, oh. I genuinely wouldn't, as my first port of call, imagine yeah, he was going to sexually yeah. assault me. Yeah, well, we we have to disagree on that one. Do you know? Do you know? It's, 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 just, can I just point this out? That this guy is now like he, he he's now he's asked her what she would think, and because she didn't give him the answer she that fits his narrative, he's now telling her. You know, he's now telling her what she really thinks. I've just told you that if a man walked in a room, my first port of call wouldn't be, oh my God, he's going to rape me. No, I didn't think you would say that. All you say, your, your natural instincts are, where's the door? Well, if, it, if the man's just walked in, a natural instinct is, where's the door? Well, the guy's just walked into the room, so presumably the door is behind him, which means he's got no way of escape. Nick has called from Richmond. Nick, you're minded to think that the, the US politician is right to be wary. I think what, the way we have to look at it is he's not making things this way. The so-called political left have made the world this way, and people have to protect themselves against it. And what I mean by that is accusing people of cultural appropriation, I don't know, of opening a Mexican restaurant, or banning all male police choirs for not being inclusive. What the, what the, what the, what the, what has Me Too got to do with cultural appropriation, opening a Mexican restaurant? Mate, 
the fact that there's an all male vo all male voice police choir and me too are not in the same fucking realms of discussion. I'm pretty sure one is considered more pertinent than the other. Um, so sometimes people are feigning or pretending old values. But they're simply projecting. Oh, yeah, everyone's feigning and pretending. Yeah, projecting. Do you know what? M most accusations of projection are act is actual projection. And I realise there's an irony to me saying that. Yes. Projecting themselves against some ridiculous new values that pretty much nobody except some leftist extremists even agree with. And, and nobody agrees with apart from some leftist extremists. So why are you worried about it? Right? If it's only a few people, if it's a minority, what's the fucking issue? But political skullduggery isn't new, is it? Uh, well, um, it's, I think a lot, uh, it's exponential. Uh, the world seems to change more and more. In the last three years, it's changed beyond recognition of the previous 50, and probably in the last year, it's changed uh, beyond recognition of the last three. In the last three years, the world's changed exponentially over the previous 50, and the previous, fi and in the last year, it's changed over the previous, what? Okay, citation needed. Okay, three years ago was when Brexit happened. So what, there's been a dramatic change since... I agree that the world's changing, but that's... And I agree that the world 50 years ago is different to the world now, but that's true. Do you know what? The world 50 years ago was very different from the w world 50 years before that. And 50 years before that was different to that f that time there. And 150 years ago, the world was different to what it was 200 years ago. Yes, the world's changing. There's new values. There's different, you know... That, that's not a fucking... You can't just say, oh, it's it's bollocks because it's new. And it's not paranoia, as you put it. I'm as not as paranoid. I just don't want to be alone with in a room with a woman for any amount of time because this bitch might be psychotic and she might accuse me of raping her. But, I, you know, I'm, it's not paranoia. Right, right. Wing. And I'm off to open a Mexican restaurant, which I would do when it weren't for the fact that it's, you know, that it's illegal and, uh, you know, basically I'm... And um, I, I wanted to also go on to the Me Too movement, if that's okay. Okay, we just moved on from that. Let's talk about something else. Me Too movement. Um, I, uh, there's no way that a sensible person could agree with the Me Too movement or trial based on hearsay. I mean... The, a sensible person could not agree with the Me Too movement. It's a trial based on hearsay. It's not a trial. No, it's, it's the whole concept is like how to kill a mockingbird. Um, the whole concept is... The okay, mark. first of all, no, mate. The whole concept is how to kill a mockingbird. How to kill a mockingbird, first of all, right, let's get this straight, it was about, you know, in that story, right, the fact that you framed it that way, right, means that you are framing it in a way where all... Any woman who comes forward with a Me Too story is immediately lying because that is what... You know, that is actually what, you know, the, um, to, you know, the, the story was about in To Kill a Mockingbird. The guy didn't... Ra and also, let's, let's, let's not frame the idea that, you know, To Kill a Mockingbird was a, was a, we predicted the Me Too movement. That was a story about how people... If anything, there's an irony there to the fact that because it was an accusation against, you know, a black man, in it, people were more willing to believe it than they were... You know, whereas if it had been, you know, against, uh, you know... Some some white guy that you know who, it probably wouldn't have been as believed as much, and there's an irony to that because that kind of mirrors when people talk about you know Pakistani or Islamic rape gangs or you know when it's an immigrant accused you know there there was the term a couple of years ago wasn't it rape fugee you know when the people came you know because people immediately believed it but but they're skeptical when it's someone else when it's someone who looks like them no 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 you're, but you're conflict if I may on me too. What you're yeah. saying there, and I and I don't doubt that there are, there is a danger this can happen, and it has happened, um, that somebody loses their job, loses their livelihood, loses their reputation before anything is actually proved about them. That's what you're referring to, isn't it? Of course. Yeah. That's what but, you're okay. For. Hang on. But me too. Hashtag me too wasn't saying, hey girls, go on social media and routinely accuse your colleagues of sexual harassment, Wait, ruin their lives without any buy or leave because. No sensible woman would do that. Um, no sensible person would do that. What Me Too was asking to try and get a sense of the scale and, 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 and make people understand the scale of harassment of girls and women was just to say, put, put online, just, just put online what happened to you. Just say what happened to you. Don't say who did it. Just put online what happened to you. And it was an incredibly powerful moment. It was a series of moments. I think it was incredibly powerful, the conversations it started. Well, that, that, that um, in, in itself is sound, but what it actually is in, in reality is...
in reality, no, 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 you said that's in itself is sound. I mean, that's what it was. You just said no reasonable person could support it. It's trial by, without due process. But it's not a trial. No one was saying, okay, who, who was subject to a trial who was not guilty of anything? And, and, and who's like, can we always hear this about, you know, oh, you know, oh, it destroys people's careers. Who's the careers has been destroyed through, through false claims? Who, who is it? Was it Bill Cosby? No. Was it Harvey Weinstein? No. Was it R. Kelly? No. Was it Louis C.K.? No. In fact, a lot of these men who get accused, you know, a lot of them sort of come for, most of them in, in many cases, they either, you know, either nothing, you know, comes of it, or nothing comes of an accusation, uh, or, you know, they will then come for, you know, they will then sort of like admit to, admit, admit that actually what they've been accused of is actually true. And we, we have as a society the idea against of whom? trial trial by against who? When I say trial, people are people have lost their reputation over no nothing more than okay. Who who name name them? Name, list the people off. Yeah, who who? Go on. Um, I I I don't recall the list of, of people, but there's I don't recall the list. Don't don't you think that's important? You know, I would remember that. Don't you think that's an important, you know? aspects of your argument right? if you're going to come forward and make an argument that me too is dangerous because it destroys innocent men's lives do you not think that it's important for you to remember at least maybe you know two or three people who are on that list it's not a lot to ask is it many many people many, on, many. Um, who, who have been let's say outed on the public media social who? media who? For, for things uh, on, on the basis of hearsay and, and how much and time it's how an much... unsound principle how much time have you, how much thought have you given out of interest to the hundreds of thousands, millions, in fact, of women and girls who uh, tweeted hashtag me too and gave their experiences throughout their lives? Well, I, uh, hang on, I, I, hang on, I, I, hang on, yes. let me know, let me finish your point. Their lives were sometimes ruined. Their lives were blighted as well. And there was no trial because nobody believed them or they didn't dare speak up like the lady who rang just before the news. You know, are we are we taking as much time to think about all of those, or just the men who are discomforted? Um, I I would say that um, a lot of left left so called left wing so called popular thought uh, is not sound um, because you're at the base of what you're saying is too wrong to make a right. What the hell are you talking about, leftist thought? This is not about. It's the, this is where, this is one of these issues that should not be have to be politicised. It shouldn't have to be that if you're left wing. You know, you, you know, you know, the, the supporting the idea that you know of, of se you know, being against you know sexual or wanting se victims of sexual harassment or assault to come forward is a left wing thing. That should not be, should it? You know, could, you know, we're not going to live in this perfect world where everyone, where where, where everyone's treated, where th there aren't fucking innocent people who get pulled into it, or there aren't people who exploit it. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So you know, so you know. This shouldn't be a left and a right thing, should it? You an open question. How much thought have you given to all of the girls and women who bothered to say hashtag me too and describe what had happened to them? Hand on heart, how often have you thought of them and their pain? Well, I, I, I think in reality, uh, well, a lot. Because I, because I... Oh, a lot, a lot. Yeah, I mean, a lot. I mean, I think in reality, I mean, a lot, a lot. I've given it a lot. I mean, I haven't, it's taken me, it's taken me, you know, it's taken me six minutes into this conversation for me to fucking, you know, mention that I give a lot of thought for that. But you know, my my. But you, know, but you know, I've given more thought. You know, I've given equal amounts of thought to all of them. I think in reality, most people with these with these claims are actually are actually correct. It's just you, so you've just fucking stuck. Your whole thing was you can't support the Me Too movement if you're reasonable because it destroys innocent men's lives. And you've just said that in reality, most of these people who come forward with a hashtag Me Too story are telling the truth. So therefore, so you're, you're telling me a reasonable person cannot support a movement. The majority of which, you know, the people are telling the truth. But it doesn't change the the, the situation that. Um, what do you it, want, mate? Putting a whole section. Come up with a scenario. Come up with a better solution. Of the population in jeopardy with, with the fact that any, anybody who wants to say anything can. And you're not, not going to and you're not going to linger even for a minute on the whole section of the population, i.e., women and girls who've been in jeopardy for centuries along these lines and been silenced for centuries because of what's happened to them. We're not going to linger on that for long before we say, oh, men, what about men? No, I, I don't think there are these systematic problems as fe um, feminism likes to claim. Oh, thank you. Thank you, mate. Thank you, thank you, mate. Thank you, thank you Mr. Man. But there are much more... Uh, 
problem than they really are. I'm, I'm sure in, in a long time in the past, a lot um, these of, here we go. were much more prevalent than they, than they are now. Nick, but, but I Nick think that, every, yes. every one of my friends, most of the women I work with, and myself, I will include obviously, because I know my own experiences, can tell you that in a lifetime, or over however long you, you've been alive, post-puberty, um, you get harassed and you get touched in an unwelcome way by unwelcome people and you have to deal with it one way or another. Um, that's that's half, half the population experiencing that routinely, Nick. Oh, probably even more than half, to be, to be honest. All right. Um, but, sorry, sorry, you want to talk about the men again? You, before we even linger for a minute no, I, on I, the experience of girls and women, you want to bring in men again? I, I, I'm just, I, I don't dispute that that's a problem. Well, you did a moment ago. Dis- you disputed no, the scale. You literally just happens. said that. And I don't, I don't dispute it happens. I don't dispute the problem. You disputed what the what scale of the problem. I'm, I'm trying to reinforce You just said a long time mind, ago. The scale of the problem. To suggest not now. I, I think that I think that the uh, a, a lot of okay I think feminism is blowing a lot of things out of proportion. Am I so guilty of doing that by telling you what I got to do with of, this? Of the women in my life and my own experience. Um, am I am I blowing this out of all proportion, or am I just telling you that actually, Nick, if you'll only listen, girls and women face a lot of unwelcome contact from men. Okay, I, I don't have my missus come back every evening and and, and tell me. I didn't me say happens every evening. Right, I, I, how, I, I, how often is it, how often is enough? How often is too much? Have you ever asked her? I I, I don't know. But if I don't, I don't know. I don't know. How often is too much? I don't know. I've heard about some of these some of these things, and yes, they do exist. They they are real, but uh, but I don't but I don't think it's uh, good to to try to swing society to the point where we're living in a situation of fear. But so, no, it's not. No one's trying to do that, mate. It's tr- it's addressing a balance, an imbalance. The fact that you're scared, you know, maybe that's a little bit, maybe that's that fear, that fear that you're experiencing, that's just a tiny, tiny fraction of what women have gone through, you know, all women have gone through every day of their lives. Imagine that. You get this right. What, what, you, what men like you don't like, what men like you don't fucking like, is the fact that, that you know, is the fact that, yes, this could be exploited. This could be used against you in a way that is, you know, is is detrimental to you if they wanted to. But you don't know that. Yeah, you haven't got enough. But you can't even fucking name people when asked. And the fact that that that, that gives women some power over you. The fact that you've got this one thing. That's what scares you, isn't it? It's the fact that women have got this, you know, thing that gives them some power and control over you. And you finally feeling what that's like and you don't like it. Now, this next caller is one of my least... I don't know why this is. And if, I don't know if, if anyone else out there feels the same way. You know, I'm asking if you're British here. But people who defend Trump is one thing, right? When, but this is, this is my least favourite type of, of Trump supporter, which is a British Trump supporter, and it's, I'm not saying that if you're British, you should be. You know, it's a, it's it's beyond the realms that you could be, you could support Trump. It's just something about hearing people defend him in a British accent that, again, it probably just it, it's it's just some irrational sense of you know sense of nation national. Maybe it's an innate. So it's like, it just it makes me it hurts me to hear someone in a British accent defending this fucking ape but th- there we go right, but this is this next guy is this is oh i'll oh, forget it just i'm just going to play this one there, this one will require little commentary from me i think it's racist what he said to the the four ladies in congress there uh, by the way what he's talking about here that he just said he doesn't think is racist is the go back home comments he made uh, recently to the squad in any way shape or form in any way shape or form they're all americans um, no, just, they're, actually, they're not. Well, we, you know, they're all. We, you know, three of them were born in America. One of them, you know, is a citizen. They're all members of. They're all fucking members of Congress. You know, you know. But you know, was it what? So when he said go back home, he meant go to America. Pointing out that they're disruptive activities. I mean, they're hardline socialists, mate. They're left wing extremists. So is this a sad state of affairs? It? They're they're left wing extremists. Like being a socialist now makes you an extremist. Like, you know, if you're a socialist, you're on a level footing with Al-Qaeda. 
and they're trying to change American politics yeah. from within. And he's okay. just pointing that out. And what's he trying? You're trying to change American politics from within. What by getting elected as Congress? But isn't that the way you should try and change? I mean, I mean, what does it matter? What do you mean from within? Are they a fifth column all of a sudden. I do. When he took over from he's Barack trying, Obama, was he trying to, to carry on doing politics exactly the same as Obama did, or was he trying to change it from within? Well, it, it, Obama didn't successfully change it. It's not what he asked, mate, and you know that, right? You know, what you just said was you said these people are trying to change politics from within, you know, by you know becoming part of the system and taking part in democracy and become, being democratically elected, you know? And what he's pointing out, what James O'Brien's pointing out is that that's exactly what Donald Trump does. You don't mind people trying to change politics from within when you agree with them. Within, so it's, 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 not, it's not a trick question. Did, did Donald Trump it, seek to carry on conducting politics in America in a fashion identical to his predecessor, or did he seek to change it from within by becoming president? I know it's not a trick question, and I'll say exactly what I just said again. Which is not the answer. Obama didn't change American society like he wanted to, so Donald Trump Pardon? is re-establishing American capitalism. Pardon? Re-establishing American capitalism, because it's been on the wane. You heard. You Donald heard. Trump is re-establishing American capitalism. 51 months of, of consecutive growth, all of which began with Obama. No, Obama's taking credit for growth. That's absolute hogwash, and you know it. <laughs> he was in charge for eight years. Growth started while he was there, and and it's carried on. So, you know, fifty-one. You know, do you know how long he had? Eight years. Do you know how long fifty-one months is? Right, right. So it just. So what? It was Bush. Bush. George W. Bush was responsible for the start, the, the growth beginning, several years into Barack Obama's. Can you count? Mate, you are in sympathy with these ladies in Congress who are trying to transform the country. You're on the radio. Country. You, 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 you. Don't interrupt me, mate. Don't interrupt me. You are on the side of these women because you would favour socialist society, a left-wing society as well. Go on, mate. I, I, James O'Brien is grim. James O'Brien's going to say something sensible. You know the scene in, in, in Life of Brian where they do the biggest dickus thing? That's the sort of face James O'Brien is making. When he's getting... <laughs> That's that kind of like trying not to laugh. Oh. I, I, I no, think you I just can't come back with anything, mate. You're in safety with these women, and um, name so them. Are, name them. The media. Name them. Well, AOC for a start. What, what does that stand for? Alexandria K or occasional cortex. No. Alexandria occasional cortex. Occasional cortex. So you, you know all about their politics, you don't even know their names. And you're on national okay, radio having your pants pulled Alexandria, down. Alexandria Ocasio Cortez. What? Okay, he's got it right, which suggests he's just, he's, he's on his, he's Googled it, right? But occasional, you know, mate, you said occasional cortex. This, that's over. This, you can't answer, you can't come back from that. That wasn't a misspeak. You said occasional cortex. So which policy do you think most uh, demonstrates their socialist tendencies, Stuart? High taxes beyond all belief. And that money. Beyond all belief. High taxes beyond all belief. Beyond all belief. 102% tax. But, but, mate, high, you can't have high taxes under socialism because everybody earns the same. So let's try again. Which policy do you think best espouses their socialist tendencies? No, everyone earns the same after the socialist template is successful, which means destroying the middle class. So they, don't want, so, they don't want socialism, then they want high taxes for high earners. Are you telling me those women don't want socialism in America? Stuart, I'm what telling you, you don't even mate, know their names. Stuart, you don't even know their names. Did you just I say... Just told you did, that. Did I you just, just say fifth column? I knew you'd ask me. He said fifth column as well. I just, I didn't notice that until just now. I watched this, I did not notice that. But he said fifth column. Right, I knew you'd ask me their names because you couldn't come back with them. Well, then why did you fucking think her name was Occasional Cortex if you knew he was going to ask? Why didn't you look it up and then write it down beforehand? I already have. I've asked you to name one socialist policy that they support. High tax. <laughs> That's not socialism. It is socialism. Okay, Stuart. What do you think socialism? Socialism is a, an ideology. You subscribe to it. So it just, work, what does it mean? It's never been proved. There you go. Socialism. It's an ideology.
it doesn't work, and if you subscribe to it, you're a fucking, you're a cunt. There you go, that's the definition. You look that up in the dictionary. We've gone from, what do these women, you know, what socialist, you know, what socialist policy do these women have, to what is socialism? What are their names? Yeah, for the record, I'm not a socialist, but tell me... Look, mate, look, mate, I'm in support of Donald Trump. Yeah, I know you are. Comments on. Yeah, we, we can work that out, mate, you know, and, and you know, that's, that's kind of the problem, isn't it? And, and you like the racism, but what do you think, what do you think socialism means? Look, you're not going to Wikipedia me out of this argument, mate. But I don't need right? to, I know... You, you don't even know what the Wikipedia definition of it is. Means. Tell me what you think you, it means. I didn't say the word, you did. What does it, it mean? Means, it means collapse. <laughs> Collapse. That's the definition of. So if you know, if so if you so if your house falls down, what happened? Oh, my house has been socialised. I heard your house is a, is now socialist. Yes, it's so it's completely socialised. It had a violent socialism during a hurricane. And you know it. And you subscribe to it. And you know it. Never work. Socialism never means work. collapse. You know it. Socialism means collapse. It'll never work, and you know it. He, James O'Brien just told him he's not a socialist. Do you want to say something? Do you, at, do you want to expand on that, Stuart, at all? Well, the socialist policies, mate, have never been proved to work. So name, sure name, name a socialist. Fast. Name a socialist policy, Stuart. Just n now, it's not. Now it's not even name socialism. Just name one policy. This is how the, the, the degeneration of this call. We're back, back round the other side of the circle now. You can't define what it means and you can't name a single socialist policy. What are you so angry about? Well, I'm trying to actually speak, mate. You, tell, you, you just can't speak. I, would, I wouldn't bother if I were you, mate. I would, if anything, if I could give you any bit of advice for the future, it would be for you to shut the fuck up. You can't have an opinion about socialism if you don't know what it means. So what does it mean? To me, personally? No. To me, personally. Right, socialism is... An ideology. It's, it's yeah, a, yes, we go. We know that, mate. That's like saying it's a thing. A political system, and it does not work. What does it mean? Those comments aren't racist. Those the, women. What are does socialism mean, America? Stuart, what does socialism they're mean? Fifth colonists, they're fifth colonists. They're four. The fifth. They're four pillars. Those four women are the four pillars of the fifth column of the Islamo-socialist, you know, political movement. So this is what happens. You see, you get someone into a dead end. Socialism. A dead, a dead end. What asking you? That, mate, this is the most basic shit. He's this far away from saying, "What is your name?" I don't know the Wikipedia. You know, you're trying to get me Wikipedia me to death. <laughs> no, just saying. Wikipedia me to death. Have you ever heard so? I didn't know Wikipedia was a verb. Now you can apparently Wikipedia someone to death. No, everyone that's phoned in has more or less been in support of the uh, four fifth columns there in America. <laughs> four, what does the four fifths. Mean, sure? The four fifths. The four fifths. Of the, who's the fifth? Who's number five? Right, to all your listeners, okay, as they are listening, nodding their head, the ones that are supporting what I'm saying is... Yeah, 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 the ones that are supporting what I'm saying, yeah. For, uh, they're probably just nodding because their fucking mouths are drooping open. Stuart, it's hasn't got a clue what it's... Stuart's on national radio condemning socialism just and revealing he doesn't know what it means. Okay, it's high, it's high taxes, it's healthcare for all that doesn't work or bankrupt the country. Healthcare for all that doesn't work? What, you mean the country that you have? The country that you live in? Where we've had a national health service since the fucking for like you know all your fucking life from the sounds of it, that's what bank that's what bankrupts it, is it? It is attacking big business. Attacking. It's an incestuous relationship. It's an incestuous relationship betwixt man and man and gerbil. Between big business oh, and government. Sweetheart. And it's it's an incestuous relationship between big business and government. He thinks socialism is a is a relation is where big business and government are the same. That's what he thinks socialism. Uh, listen, next time... Patronising, you see. Next, of course I'm patronising you. You're, you're a clown. You're on national radio condemning socialism. You're a clown. And you've been asked, you're a clown. No, you're, you're a, clown. a clown. No, you're a clown. And you're just as bad as those women in Congress. No, and, and, you're, and you're just as bad. And my dad's bigger than your dad. OK, this final call, this is, uh, this is, uh, this is some woman talking about Brexit. Just... I'm patriotic. I'm a Brit exeter. If we've got to get out with no deal, we do. Why? I'm, I am because I'm 70 years old. Yeah. I Wait, so you won't be around when the fucking full-on worst consequences of it happen. We have had bad times in this country, oh. and we've had good times. Oh, we've here we go. A lot, and we come out on top because. Ca character. It's not. It's nothing to do with character. I'm sick of it. I'm sorry. As soon as this is fucking, this is she's. 
you know, we're barely a minute into this and she's going down the old, oh, in this country we got the, the, the stiff upper lip and the spirit in a blitz and all oh, this have a fucking, you know, I'm sick of this fucking, and you know, all you have to do is believe, I'm sick of this fucking horse shit. You know, when people bring up that, oh, I remember when the Nazis tried to destroy this country, what, and we're doing it for them now, are we? He's right. We can source stuff from the rest of the world. What stuff? That's the first well, I'll give you an example. Yes, the guy, the guy who owns Wotherspoons, yeah. when we got we got the boat that we wanted to come out, he started sourcing from other places in the world for a lot of his goods. He wrote it in his he wrote it in his magazine. That's where I read it from, yeah. and he said propaganda, he uh, not magazine. Goods. I think it was brandies, all, all sorts of yes, stuff. Was it cheaper than what he yes, was getting was cheaper, from the European Union? it was cheaper, and it was just as good. So why it, wasn't he doing... You, you realise he was doing that before we left? Because we were part of Europe. Yes, but we still are, so why couldn't yeah, he have done that? we've no, been called. Christy, just pause for a little moment, if you would. I, I'm going to take right. what you said on trust. I'm sure this is, this that is, he did manage to secure... This, this next few minutes is life-threateningly fucking infuriating. Well, bring him on. No, the, the, absolutely, I will. I don't need to. I've got you here to represent him, but he's more than welcome to ring in, just as everybody else is. So, your your evidence that it's a good idea to leave is that he found cheaper drinks before yeah. we left. Before we left. And he passed it. He passed it on. Well, they were all preparing. If we got, if we no, left. But, but Christian, just I again, I'm sorry, but I, you you have to just reflect for a moment on what you've just said. We, yes. we, we have to leave so that Tim Martin of Weatherspoons can do something he's already done. Yeah, because he did it to prepare for, if we had a slow illness. He could do it, Christina, I'm going to labour this point, and I do apologise because it's not going to be pretty, but we're still in the European Union. We are at the moment. And he did this thing you're telling me we have to leave the European Union to do. No, he. what he says is an example of all the Ramonas who keep no, saying... No, 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 Christine, stop, stop, stop using insulting language. Brexit, people with Brexiteers never moan, do they? Okay, you, I won't you, use that. He, okay. he has done something. I've been insulted no, by the well, I'm, very, I'm very sorry to hear that. But you, call, you introduced yourself as a Brexiteer, darling. So you can't now say, turn around and say it's an insult. You introduced yourself as one. The thing, Christine, if, if this is the example you want to... if this is the It's not the N-word, my dear. That, that, ...that you want to build. You've just told me that he's already done it. Yes, because so, he's it. Yes, but he's already done it, and yes, we're in. He has. So, so we're in the European Union, right? Yeah. And we are he's, at the moment. And he's already done it. Yes, because he foresaw the future. Yes. So here's he the question: the future. Why, why do we have to leave to do something we could do while we were in it? Because they're still controlling us. They've got no respect for this country. Oh, I've seen some of the things that have been going on. Go on, tell me. I love. Britain. I love what it represents. I, I love, love this country. Oh, I love it. I love it so much. What it gives to the rest of the world. Well, you, you've hated I'm it since 1975, it. though. Pardon? You've hated it since 1975. No, because we weren't so controlled then. So what it are the, what, what are the controls coming? So, so talk me through. Actually, no, I'm not going to let that go, Christine. I, I think I think you need to take on board what you've said on national radio. Yes, it, I am taking on board. You have said so to we have to leave the European Union because Tim Martin has done something while we were still in the European Union. He did it because yes. he prepared for us leaving, like a lot of yes, other countries But how have could done. he do it if we weren't allowed to do it because of well, all those controls? Well, you'll have to get him on. I'm only going by what his magazine says. Well, do you, you'll you'll no, but but you must understand. And you can't bail out of this now, darling. You can't. You can't use that. Sorry you read how could he do it if we're not allowed to do it well i don't know i'm not a big businessman no well I... no you're not a big businessman are you but then why the fuck are you ringing but i, I was impressed with what he said but if you find i got a feeling that certain things that would impress you are a lot less impressive than what would impress most people i got a feeling if i poured boiling water on your head i have a new flavor for pot noodle right okay how come we source all our metal to china if we're not allowed trade agreements pardon if we're not allowed trade agreements for the rest of the world no who said we're not allowed trade agreements well, that's what you said gonna happen. no i said on november the first we won't have any and and well, i'm not an expert on metal trading but it, but i'm pretty sure we don't trade freely with china well but there are tariffs in place yes but it hasn't harmed us has it pardon it hasn't harmed us having trade agreements with China. We don't have any trade. We don't have any trade agreements with China. 
Well, I'm sorry. I, I Why do you keep saying it. sorry, Christine? Because you're getting annoyed at what I'm, I'm saying. I'm not remotely okay, annoyed. I'm, not annoyed. I'm, upset, yeah. I'm not even upset. No, I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm sorry if you know if if I'm I am fucking you know just driving you to the point of fucking heroin addiction. You want these aren't November the first. We have no trade agreement. So at the moment we have agreements with 120 different countries. And, and by the way, each trade agreement with each country can take anywhere between five to seven years. Some of them take up to 20 years. You do the math. Where, uh, what, all in Europe? Obviously not. What, all in Europe? What, yeah, we've got trade agreements with 120 European countries, you fucking... The European don't. Union has all sorts of trading agreements with countries outside the European Union, which is what we will be on November the 1st. Well, I, I can't... What do you think going to say sorry people? again. What do you think is going to get better? Hmm? What do We're going to have control of our country. Control, well, control of what, Christine? What's hell. the thing we can't currently control that most well, frustrates you? They, they've said a lot of different laws have had to change. I can't remember them now. You must be I can't, no one can remember them, they? Always forget. But, to name one. Okay. Yeah. Um, all right. Now, this is, this is a crazy one. Yeah. But we all used to have our fish and chips in newspaper. And then it was deemed it was wrong. Right. Now, when we had the fish and chips in newspaper, there wasn't loads of people no. went down with tummy upsets and things like that. No, no, it this had is a not. smell to it, and I can remember this is that not. smell no. and how lovely it was. Yeah. But no, this is not your argument. This, this is a small and, and that, thing. And that was the EU, was it? Yes, the EU. Okay. That was a, that was a. You, you... We can't have our fish and chips in fucking newspaper and that's why you voted to that's what you I'm, I'm done I'm out I'm sorry I'm not carrying on I can't I can't that is the single I have heard some fucking ridiculous fucking shit from from leather in Warsaw to fucking yogurts in the fucking to tomatoes in you know Kenyan tomatoes but that is the fucking the newspaper wrapped fish Christine here's the thing next time you get fish and chips right take your own fucking newspaper with or even better buy the fish and chips then rewrap it when you get back home you don't have to fucking destroy the country to fucking just so you can have some fucking new Goodbye.